Hey, good morning, everyone. Monday morning, base leg aviation. We're working on an RV9 condition inspection, 9A actually. This is one that was purchased uh, in California about a year, a year and a half ago. So it's come to base leg for the first condition inspection back this way, which is good. So excited about that. First thing we notice when we walk in, you know, everybody always talks about our clean floor. I keep it that way for a reason. We can see where there's leaks and sure enough, the left wing on this side had a, a big spot on the floor, fuel leak. You may have seen this one in my books. If you have my books, I think I've even done videos, but here's the drain and you can see all of the junk in there by the O-ring, okay? So the fuel drain does not need to be replaced. It needs to be pulled out and just cleaned and then put back in, the O-ring looks good. To do that, if you look right underneath here, what we do is you can pull it out very quickly and put in a little uh plug all you guys who built airplanes and girls you'll have a, one of those uh, pipe thread plugs it's eighth pipe thread plug just put it in there real quick you won't lose but a couple ounces of fuel you do it very quickly it gives you time to clean this and then we'll swap that back okay uh one of the things we do then is take the airplane outside first and we'll run up the airplane as you've heard me talk about in the past and we'll check everything We'll see what all the engine gauges are doing, make sure the electrical system's good. In this case, the electrical system's only charging at 13.3 volts. That's not good. We've got an Odyssey battery on here. They really like to see north of 14, 14 and a half volts would be good. The battery will last a lot longer. So I've already spoken with the customer. We're gonna put on a uh, aircraft alternator. It currently has an automotive alternator, which is usually 13 and a half volts or so. So we're gonna change that out. Uh, the other thing we noticed, uh, <clears throat> it has two, elect uh, two magnetos, two slick mags. We're at 569 hours on this engine aircraft combination. And remember what happens at 500 hours? 500 hour service bulletin for slick magnetos, correct? So we're gonna have to pull both magnetos and we'll do those service bulletins. And we'll try and get a couple pictures of those for you as we're doing those in a while. Uh, drain back. <coughs> Hoses on the cylinders, we're going to replace those with Mill 6000-6 rubber hose. They're leaking, and the intake gaskets also need uh, replacement. No surprise, uh, 560 hours on the aircraft. So this basically needs some TLC. Looks like a nice aircraft, and uh, we'll walk you through it here as we go through some more on the inspection. Hi, everyone. Wednesday morning, promised uh, we'd get you a closeout on this aircraft this week. So we just finished up the condition inspection. We still have the run it. But I'll share with you some of the things we did here. So I did mention, I think, that we noticed the intake gaskets were, uh, uh, they were pretty bad. Matter of fact, they had to get chipped off and then uh, clean up the flange on the cylinder. So we have all new intake hoses, intake gaskets, uh, drain back hoses as well. Uh, this one, we ended up putting a new alternator on it, uh, new service bulletin. Uh, or not new, but uh, uh, both Magnetos, the $500 service bulletin, got those done, new distributor housing and contact points. And so you got to remember when you put the mags back in, we got to time the engine. So after compression check, uh, we set it up for top dead center on number one, and then back it off to 25 degrees before top dead center. We'll put the Magnetos in there, time those so they fire at the same time. We had the propeller off to put a new alternator belt on since we put a new alternator on it. So guess what? That required retorquing these prop bolts. We just set those at 38 foot pounds as per the Cato sticker. We'll safety wire these and then we think we're all set to run. Gascalator's been cleaned. Didn't notice any contaminations there or in the oil screen. So we got six quarts of oil back in there and a new oil filter. And then the logbook work is all done. And uh, that's the last thing we want to do, right? So we are going to run the engine now and uh, make sure everything we did is fine. One of the things we did notice, I would encourage all of you to think about, we talk about doing compression checks all the time. And I know the majority of mechanics just do a compression check. We do borescopes here. And I'm going to include a couple pictures uh, in this video. We'll have Carol put them on there so you can see the pictures. But there's certainly a lot of scoring inside uh, some of these cylinders here. It, uh, I don't know the history completely, but it, it may have sat for a while. There's evidence of that. Uh, one of the things I noticed, and I'll show you a picture, one of the magnetos is uh, an impulse coupled magneto. Since we have two magnetos, you have to have one impulse coupled one. Uh, remember the impulse coupling works below 500 RPMs. That helps with starting. What happens for those of you who, and I've talked about this in the past, you leave your airplane sitting around or you don't fly it very often, 
The worst thing you can do is actually run this airplane engine on the ground. Don't go out to the hangar and start the key and, oh yeah, I ran it once a month, you know, 10 minutes. What happens is you're putting a lot of moisture into this crankcase. Remember combustion water is a byproduct of that combustion process. And what happens is in this accessory case back here, if you come back and look at the, with the camera back here, and we call it the accessory case because everything's back here, right? Magnetos, tack drive, uh, fuel pump down at the bottom, oil filter. This whole back part of the engine, a lot of moisture gets in there. And unless you actually run this engine enough, which is usually about 30 minutes at a good operating temperature of like 180 degrees on the oil temp, you're just going to leave a bunch of moisture in that crankcase. And we could actually see a lot of the rust from doing that on the impulse coupling on the magneto. And I'll show you a picture of that. I did clean it up before we put it back in, but uh, that's sure a sign that potentially the camshaft may be um, you know, a problem down the road. So again, when you go fly your airplane, run it up to operating temperature for a while. If you wanna see a visual presentation of that moisture that's going on, just look at any car ahead of you on the road in the winter time or on a cold morning and you'll see all that uh, steam vapor coming out the exhaust pipe. That's all water vapor, all right? And, and after the car warms up, you don't see that anymore because everything's hot. That whole exhaust system is hot. Same thing's going on inside this aircraft engine. What happens with the combustion is that moisture gets pushed by the rings into the crankcase, and then it just sits there. And then when you shut down, we get water droplets inside the uh, case. All right, so uh, take care of your engines. They're getting very, very expensive. Lycoming's very proud of them these days, and uh, it'll last longer for you. All right, thanks for watching. Take care.